So thank you all for being here today. I'm one of the co-founders of Women Tech Council, and as you heard, I have an engineering, a chemical engineering, and a law degree. And I was able to use both of these degrees to become a patent attorney for the first part of my career. And then I moved into high growth startups in educational technology and was the CEO of an HR tech company. And while I didn't technically engineer, um, I do look back on my STEM degree as the beginning of learning some really important leadership skills that I want to talk about today. It's actually no mistake that many of the Fortune 500 CEOs have STEM degrees, and that actually goes for the women. The women in the top, th in the top tier, many of them have engineering or, or computer science degrees. So what is it about a STEM degree that gives us these leadership skills that carry on even far into our careers? So here on campus is the physics building, the old physics building. And there's a quote on one of the walls, and this was 25 years ago. This quote is actually seared into my brain. I might be going backwards, let me just check. This quote is seared into my brain. It's a quote by Albert Einstein. He says, I have little patience with scientists who take a board of wood, look for its thinnest part, and drill a great number of holes where drilling is easy. And this quote has never left me. And it might have been because I was going through a little challenging period of time. So back then, the physics, the engineering physics classes had about 400 people in them. So I'm sitting in a room with 400 other people, very few women, and the engineering professor's up there solving one of these problems up there at the chalkboard, because back then we used chalk. And I'm sitting here thinking, I think there's another way to solve that problem. And so I raised my hand and I said, hey, I, I think there's another way to get to that problem. What do you think? And he looks at me and he said, that's impossible. There is no other way to solve that problem. I was like, oh, OK. And I remember having a choice at that moment, right? I could choose to take his words and internalize them and say, huh, maybe I'm not smart enough. Maybe I didn't know what I was thinking. Maybe I'm not good enough for this program. So I did what any of you would have done, and I proved him wrong. So I sat down, kind of solved the problem on a piece of paper, and I got the same answer. And there's these moments that are reaffirming that STEM gives us the opportunity to do hard things. And it's not just the coursework. Doing hard things includes speaking up for yourself, having the confidence to fight for yourself and to advocate for yourself. And those are leadership skills that you learn early on in your STEM career. Now, I'd like to say that everything is easy after your degree, but it's not. You're actually going to face a number of situations in which such the circumstances are not ideal. And, you know, <laughs> so this will tell you a little bit about me. I actually kept all of my homework from my engineering and my law course. And beca right, because I had this thought that, well, I might be able to use this again to solve a similar problem. And it turns out 10 years later, I was throwing out bags and bags of coursework because, you know, we did our homework on paper back then. And I was checking with my husband. I said, how many bags was that? I think it was three. He goes, no, Ma no, honey, it was five big garbage sacks full of paperwork that I threw out because I never actually faced the same problems, right? There are very few scenarios that you are going to see over and over again. But your STEM degree is teaching you the problem-solving skills. When you look at those scenarios that are not ideal, you have a choice. You can say, this situation is not ideal, and be all frustrated about it. Or you get to choose to engineer the solution. <laughs> so I found that my entire career, even though I'm not technically an engineer, I've been engineering solutions my entire career. This is an amazing time. So when I come on a campus like this 25 years later, I'm super jealous and I want to go back to school. And there's so many interesting things happening with technology and I hope you never lo lose that love of learning. I wish we could take grades out of the university and college experience. But don't lose that love of learning. The best leaders are lifelong learners and they are constantly inspired by the way that they can change the world around them. So stay inspired. And then lastly, you know, I want to say that STEM is easy, and it's not. And I want to say that all companies are welcoming to women, and some aren't. When I first got into my law firm, there was a certain shareholder that refused to work with me because I wanted to have a family. 
And it was the first time that I actually ever cried in my career. Because I was so shocked and so frustrated that I'd put all this effort into my engineering degree and law degree, and here somebody was going to refuse to work with me simply because I was a woman. And you have that choice in that moment to throw up your hands in the air and give up and say, I don't belong here. Or you have the choice to prove them wrong, right? So the reason why we're all here is because we've enjoyed this journey. Women in STEM do hard things. Women in STEM engineer solutions. Women in STEM are inspired by their voice, by their ideas that they have, and they have a place. And the reason why all these people are here in this room and why there's hundreds and thousands of industry people that are going to support this program is because they believe that this journey is worth it. So I hope no matter what happens in your career that you enjoy the journey. Thank you.